Hi everyone, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. I'm happy to have you here. Um, thank you to everyone who commented and um, on my last video and told me what your favorite things to stitch on and with were. That was really fun. Um, I really enjoyed reading all of your comments, so thank you so much. We are going to do the giveaway, but I'm going to do it at the end of the video. So hang tight, we're going to get there. Um, hopefully not too long of a video today. I do have some stuff to show you, so let's jump right in. Quick family update, we're doing great. Um, husband has sent in something like 30 applications to different programs for his Dermatopathology Fellowship. Um, but we're not going to find out probably for months. Um, we will probably, he'll probably start getting invitations to interview um, kind of later in the summer, maybe August, September time frame. And then most programs, the earliest they can make an offer is in November. So we've got a ways to, we've got a little bit of time to wait. But he has been sending in lots of applications and feeling pretty confident, but fingers crossed it's really competitive and hard to get into so everyone just keep your fingers crossed say your prayers we would really appreciate it um, I hope you're all doing well I hope you're staying healthy and safe and um, yeah hope you're enjoying your stitching let's let's look at what I've got I have notes today because otherwise I'm gonna forget things okay so first things first, um, I, someone asked if I would show some of my previous finishes. I have a lot of new subscribers since I started making videos again a couple months ago. And there are some things that I have finished um, either recently or not so very recently that some of you haven't seen because you're new here. Uh, and so someone asked if I would start showing previous finishes and I said, sure, okay, I'm happy to do it. This one is a more recent finish. This one was finished for um, the Missouri State Fair last summer. And unfortunately it's looking like that the state fair so far in Missouri is still, it was scheduled to go up in August and right now they're still planning to do it, but it's looking like maybe some of the competitions will not be held. They will still have the livestock, I think, competitions, but maybe not the household arts. So no baking or cooking, no sewing or crafts. It's looking like that's the case. That's not for sure yet. There's still a possibility we might be able to enter things, but I'm not holding my breath. So this was finished for last year's State Fair. And this is a piece by Country Cottage Needleworks, itchy nose, sorry, um, called Red, White, and Bloom. And this is how I finished it. So I changed the colors on mine. I do not have the color conversion anymore. Unfortunately, I just used DMC and all I did is I looked at what was called for and then I went into my DMC and I just picked colors that I liked. So this is what mine turned out looking like, red, white, and blue. And then this is a, um, a hammered aluminum tray I found at an antique mall that I just thought was really beautiful and it was the perfect size for this piece and so I just mounted this on some foam core board. I did put some batting behind this one and then I put some little pom-poms and a ruffled, a ripped and ruffled um, blue fabric and then some of that vintage lace that my grandmother gave me. Um, and then I made a little torn um, bow with more of that pom-pom trim and a little covered button and that's all I did and it's really simple This can hang or it can stand. I did Gorilla glue a sawtooth hanger on the back so it can be hung on the wall and that is um, Country Cottage Needleworks red white and bloom and I really love it I stitched this probably three or four years ago, but didn't finish it until last year and you can't see it says white right there But when I get further away, you can't see it so that is um, Country Cottage Needleworks Red, White, and Blue. And that was finished last year for the fair. So about a year ago now. And I'm feeling a little bit sad about the fair, but we need to do what's safe and healthy. And I'm, you know, my stuff can wait. <laughs> it's all right, I'll just wait and enter it next year. Okay, finishes. I have a couple of finishes, more than a couple, quite a few. Um, so, Last time I showed you that I had my third, no, yes, my third um, finish from Stitch Mania. 
finished two weeks ago in my last video. And since then, I have finished five more pieces from Stitch Mania. All smalls, but still, so five more finishes. So that is eight finishes of the 16 that I started. So I am halfway finished with my Stitch Mania. It's been almost a month since Stitch Mania ended and I've gotten half of my pieces fully stitched. Now, bear in mind, I was very intentional about picking small pieces for Stitch Mania, but still, I'm pretty proud of that. So here's what I've got. First, I finished, you guys saw this in last week's video, Humble Honey. This is by uh, Hands On Design, Kathy Haberman. And this was from, this was a new release at market this year. Humble Honey, it's the bee's knees, so sweet. And I wanna finish it just like she has um, in a little pin cushion. And I'm thinking about ordering the, the little pin minis because I think they're really, really sweet. So that's the chart, <laughs> make some space. And here's the finish. Humble honey, it's the bee's knees. Sorry, I haven't ironed it yet. There's a big crease up there. So um, I showed you the colors that I stitched this with um, last week. So if you wanna know what colors I used, you can go check out last week's, or two weeks ago, my last video. But this is Humble Honey. It's the bee's knees. So cute. And again, I don't usually show my backsides, but lest you think I'm some kind of perfect stitcher, I definitely carry threads. <laughs> These little gold like dots, I don't know if they were supposed to, if they're supposed to look like bees or what, but they, uh, there was no way I was going to pin stitch all of those bad boys. And I definitely run threads between letters. And so you know what? I'm a perfectionist and I'm sure there's more perfectionists out there than myself, but try not to, you know, finished is better than perfect, right? And if something's going to be so annoying to you that you're not going to finish it and you're just going to throw it in your whip bin, then just do what you got to do to get it done, right? Finished is better than perfect. So that's Humble Honey and that was Stitch Mania 2020 finish number four. Then finish number five was Summer Whirly Gig. This is by Heart and Hand. Um, this is a series. There are four of these. There's a spring, summer, fall, and winter. I have all four of them, and I do intend to finish all four of them. Um, I think I want to finish these in a little tart pan, the little tart pan finish, which I think is adorable and so cute. I've never tried to finish that way before, and I do not have the tart pan yet, but I'm going to start looking for the right size tart pan because that's how I want to finish the four of these. So just an idea. They show a finishing idea. They did theirs in a hardware, um, this hardware ceramics. They designed this to fit inside a hardware tart. Um, ceramic piece with a glass cloche over it and that's what it looks like also very pretty I think I'm gonna do mine in a metal tart pan but again really sweet so that is summer whirly gig by heart in hand this is another one as always I picked my own thread colors but I will show you what I did it's so tiny it's so cute this is my hand my whole hand can cover it <laughs> and I have small hands this is summer whirly gig I stitched this on 32 count vintage country mocha and I will tell you the colors. It's really sweet. I love the little barn and the truck and the sunflower. I just think it's really cute. That is a summer whirly gig. The colors I stitched this with, they're all on a ring. These are all, um, I think they're almost all classic color works, but there's a few gentle arts maybe oh all classic color works and maybe some other things so i used classic color works red current classic color works used brick this is a gentle arts gentle arts brandy for the bright yellow for the darker gold i used classic color works ye old gold the light green is classic color works pea pod and then for the neutrals here, um, we have Weeks Dye Works Grapevine, Weeks Dye Works Onyx, which is one of the called for colors actually. I had one of them. Weeks Dye Works Pebble, and Classic Color Works Antique Lace, which is a beautiful off white. You can't really. Uh. 
These little bobbins are hard to show. <laughs> Antique lace, there you go. It's a beautiful kind of creamy off-white. So those were the colors I used for it. And uh, yeah, it's really sweet. I love it. I'm excited to do the other three and finish the series. They stitch up really quickly. So that's a quick and easy way to get four cute seasonal finishes that you can swap out. So yeah. Next one I finished. So that was Stitch Mania finished number five. Number six, I finished Live Within Your Harvest, also by Hands On Design. You'll see I've been stitching a lot of hands-on design recently. This is Live Within Your Harvest. Thank you everyone who gave me your thoughts on the light blue up here. I did go with a lighter blue. I didn't go quite this light, that kind of sky blue. I didn't go quite that light. You'll see in a minute, but I did lighten it up. Um, these um, patterns do come with the velveteen to finish, um, and I will be finishing all of mine as a little flapjack pillow, just like Joan. I don't have the chenille trim, and I don't know if I'm going to get the chenille trim, or I might do pom-poms, or I might do rickrack, um, a rickrack trim around the edge. I haven't decided yet, but that is what Live Within Your Harvest looks like. And here is mine. Ta-da! Live Within Your Harvest. You can see the blue is slightly lighter than the one I used last time and it doesn't get so lost and muddy. You can definitely see it, but it's not quite so bright blue. I just liked it a little bit more antiqued, a little bit more subtle, I don't know. But that's Live Within Your Harvest and she is so cute. And I love the corn up here, so fun. So the colors that I stitched, oh, first of all, I stitched this on 32 count, let me see if I can show you against a white, yeah. 32 count, there we go. 32 count vintage Sahara um, by Zweigart. And this is a one of those fake over dyed fabrics that Zweigart makes, like vintage country mocha. Vintage Sahara, you can see, is more of a golden yellow rather than a brown. Um, so, looks really good with these colors, I really like it. This was stitched, Again, chose my own thread. Oh no, this is the one where I had almost all of the called for threads. So this is almost all of the called for threads for this piece. Gentle Art Soot, uh, Gentle Art Cider Mill Brown. Ooh, there you go, brown. Gentle Arts Pomegranate. Mine has a very bright white spot that didn't get dye. I don't know why. So when I've been stitching with this, I've been cutting that out because I don't like it and it's plenty long that if I just cut that little center section out I have two very usable pieces left so you know with with over dyed threads sometimes there's little things like that and you just you don't know until you get it home and you take it off the skein to unfold it and you go oh oh my goodness that's very white there but anyway so that's pomegranate that's the color it's absolutely beautiful um, Gentle Arts Harvest Moon is the yellow Gentle Arts Chives is the green. This is the new light blue that I chose. This is a Victorian motto um, sampler shop over dyed cotton called Loch Ness Blue. And it's a beautiful kind of, <sighs> is Amish blue a thing? It's, it's like a Wedgwood blue. It's a very country sort of prim denim blue. I don't know. It's just a really pretty blue and it works so well with these colors. Um, the last color in the piece is the Gentle Art Hyacinth, which is the purple. And yeah, these colors together you can see are just beautiful. So that Loch Ness blue just goes so well with those colors. So that's what I used to stitch Live Within Your Harvest. And that makes three of those um, hands-on design flapjack pillow things that I've done. So I have three done and I bought the other three. So I have three to go and then they're all done. I just love them. So that was finish number six for Stitch Mania. Finish number seven. And this, some may argue that this isn't actually a finish because the project is not done. But one third of the project is done and I'm counting it as a finish because it's its own pattern. That is that I finished the first one of the Patriotic House Trio. I finished this one and I'm counting it as a finish. It's a small finish. Um, haven't done these two yet, but I'm going to. Here it is. 
It's so pretty! I am stitching this on 32 count vintage smoky white by Zweigart, another one of those faux hand dyes um, where it's printed on and you can see if I hold it at an angle you can kind of see some of the modeling. It's just a really subtle kind of gray modeling. It's not Ooh, and it makes me look super washed out. Sorry, it's a very cloudy, rainy day here, and so this is the best I got as far as lighting goes. Um, but this is Country Cottage Needleworks, page, or not Country Cottage Needleworks, Waxing Moon Designs. Did I say Country Cottage before? Waxing Moon Designs Patriotic House Trio. I had to do a little bit of frogging on this. I originally had these words stitched in a different color red, and as I started putting that same red in down here in the bunting, I realized I didn't like it. It was too orangey. It was too much of like a brick red, which I know some people like. Um, I did not. So then I pulled out some more true reds and they were too bright. This has much more of like a prim vintage um, patriotic feel and I didn't like the bright reds so I went back to my tub of floss and I did some more experimenting and I finally found a really good um, red to go with this so I'll show you in a second it's more of a wine red um, so this got put in and frogged out two times before this color went in and then it stayed <laughs> but Everything else is how I planned. I also changed the red in the house to kind of match better with this red, but I'll show you in a minute. Um, so that is Country, or er, I keep saying Country Cottage. It's not Country Cottage. Waxing Moon Designs Patriotic House Trio number one of the three houses. And um, this is the pattern, obviously. And these are the colors that I've, I've used. And I think I have shown these before, but I'm gonna go through them again since I did change the reds. Um, and someone is, <laughs> there's always someone who asks to see the colors that I use. And so I'm just going to show you. So these are the two reds that I picked. This darker red is what's in the house. And this lighter red is what's everywhere else in the, the word America and down in the bunting on the bottom. So the darker red for the house, I used spectacular claret. It's beautiful. And then for the lighter red, I used primberry by Victorian Motto. And the, those together, you can see with the other colors, it was it was perfect. The colors looked so much better and I was so much happier with how it looked on the actual piece. I'm um, just going quickly through, almost all of these are Victorian Motto, um, but there are a few exceptions. The gold I used is A Golden Harvest. Yellow is Sunshine Glory. The light green is Garden Glory. The dark green is yucca plant or yucca depending on who you ask my dark blue that's in the border and will be the border of all three pieces is classic colorworks blacksmith blue and i have a bobbin of it and a skein so this is one um color that's not victorian motto my lighter blue is victorian motto pilgrim blue which is very similar to the one I used in Live Within Your Harvest. This one's just a little bit more gray. It has a little bit more of a dusty um, blue. Then we're using Gentle Arts Soot as my gray. And then brown is Weeks Dye Works Rust. And my off-white is um, Victorian Motto Bread Dough. And when they're all together, it looks just beautiful. You can see the colors really play nicely together. Um, and so this is, I'm considering this a finish, but I am gonna go ahead and um, start now probably, I don't know, whichever house is calling my name. Maybe the blue one, maybe the gold one. Which house do you think I should start next? The gold one or the blue one? Comment down below. Vote for which house I should start next from the Patriotic House Trio by Waxing Moon Designs, not my country cottage. So that was finish number seven. And then my last finish, ooh, I keep blowing out, sorry. My last finish from Stitch Mania from this year is I went ahead and finished stitching my next Scary Apothecary. This is the third one I've done in the series. There are nine in this series. It's also by hands-on design. You guys know I'm a big fan of Kathy. Um, this one is Cauldron Cleaner. 
and I have chosen my own fabric and threads for this series. You, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen um, what I've decided to do, but in case you're new here, I have chosen to stitch the nine of these on three different colors of fabric. Um, a, uh, they're all pastels. One's a lime green, one's a pastel orange, and one's a pastel lilac purple color. Um, and so that's what I'm stitching them on and I've chosen my own threads and I'm not going to go through them today because you're going to see them a million more times. I still have six of these to go, but I'll just show you really quickly what the threads look like. However, this is my cauldron cleaner. And you can see my orange is much brighter than the one that she used, but that's because that's my taste. I am a very bright, vibrant kind of color person. And the light lime, the sun is coming out, of course, halfway through my video. It's been overcast and gray. And just now, as I'm, there you go, you can really see the lime green. This is a struggle, friends. Okay, can you see the lime green fabric there? And you can see how the orange looks on that lime green fabric. It looks really good. <laughs> the colors look fantastic on this fabric, but it's really hard to get a good image of it. There you go. That's probably the best I'm going to be able to do today. But that is cauldron cleaner. And these are my threads. And again, I took the called for threads and I brightened them up a lot. You're going to see some of you are going to go, whoa, that's a little too much for me. It is right up my alley. These are my colors. <laughs> these are my, um, there you go. These are my Halloween colors. I just love them. This bright, like glow in the dark, almost green. It's fantastic. So we have like a dark red, orange, bright orange, yellow, neon green, limey green. This is like an aqua. We've got two purples, a royal purple, and then a lighter like lilac purple, a light gray and a dark gray. And those are the colors for this whole series for me. I'm using these for all nine of them. And now I have three done. Cauldron cleaner is done. So that was finish number eight from Stitch Mania for me this year. And I'm so excited. I'm gonna put these threads away while I'm talking to you. I'm so excited to be halfway done with Mania. I mean, I have a lot more whips than I usually, or I had before Mania started still, obviously, because I had, what, six or seven whips, and then I added 16 more, and now I finished eight. So that puts me at probably about 15 whips still in my whip bin, but I'm having fun. I'm still enjoying it. The shocking thing is, is after finishing all of these small things, I am feeling a little bit like I want a new start. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I decide to start something new. I haven't really decided. I pulled my my uh, big file box of patterns out um, to look through and see if there's anything that really screams at me. That's actually something. Are you guys interested in seeing how I store my cross stitch patterns? How I keep them organized? I have a new system that I, before they were just all in like a plastic tote and I would just like leaf through them to find things. Now I actually have them sort of organized. And if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know down below in the comments. Tell me if you want to see my cross stitch pattern organization. Anyway, okay. Those were my five finishes in the last two weeks. Um, finished eight things from Mania so far. I have two other whips that I've worked on. Also Mania starts. I've just wanted to work on Mania. Um, the first one I have a lot more progress on than the other one. The other one I've done like barely anything, but I'll show it to you anyway. Um, the first one is, I see a pattern here. Also hands-on design. This is Star Spangled Swine Farm. This I started for Mania. It is the cutest ever. Um, I started this for Mania. This is a collaboration between Hands-On Design, Kathy Haberman, and Priscilla Blaine. If you watch um, The Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, Priscilla does amazing chalk art, and she and her daughter Chelsea are now doing their own patterns, but before that, Priscilla has had quite a few collaborations with Kathy at Hands-On Design, and Priscilla would draw the chalk art, and then Kathy would chart it for Cross Stitch. So I'm doing the big one. I started this for Stitch Mania, and the last time you saw it, I just had a tiny little bit up here in the top left corner of this banner. I had from about this stripey flag 
to, I think I was just starting on this stripey flag and that was all I had. So just kind of the top left corner done. And I have extended it a little further. <laughs> Finished that flag, took the banner down and now I've started working on the house. And I've so far I've only put in white, obviously. Um, but that's what I've got. I'm really loving this. I think this is so cute. It's so patriotic and it's that time of year and I'm in that kind of mood anyway. Um, yeah, and I'm just really loving it. So this is Star Spangled Swine Farm. Um, I don't think I'm going to go through the threads um, because I've shown them before and I'm just using DMC for this. Um, I did change a few of the colors. She does offer, it's charted in um, cotton over dyes, mostly classic color works, but I, and, and with those, she offers a DMC alternative. She offers a conversion on the chart, but some of her, um, alt, like some of her DMC conversion colors, I didn't have, and we were right in the thick of quarantine and I couldn't go get the colors. So I had to kind of go with what I had. So there were a few changes that I made, but they're not very big. They're pretty subtle changes. They stayed in the same color family. I just went and found a thread. I think the reds are slightly different and I think maybe one of the blues and maybe the greens. And that's that's kind of it and they're not huge changes if you do want to know exactly what I used you can let me know down in the comments and I can uh, maybe post that in the description box or something but I'm just using DMC for that one so that's what I did on Star Spangled Swine Farm and I'm gonna keep working on it because I'm really having fun this one I put on my cue snap last night to get some work done on it and I'm enjoying it but for some reason it's just not hitting the spot for me right now. So I'm probably gonna take it back off the Q-snap and go back to Star Spangled Swine Farm. It's also by Hands-On Design. It's also a chalkboard fabric piece. This is my um, A Year in Chalk May. This is chart number five, May, um, in this series. Plant Seeds of Joy. And for Stitch Mania, all I got was the plant sign. And I got like five stitches over here of the word seeds. But it was basically just the plant sign done. And last night, I wasn't very focused. I was watching a movie with my husband. And I got to there. <laughs> I put in the rest of seeds and I started working on the little banner um, outline. And that's as far as I got. But again, I'm just finding this not as thrilling as they were for me a month or two ago. It's probably just the mood I'm in. I think I just want to stitch patriotic right now. Fourth of July is in a week and I think that's part of the problem. So I'm probably going to take this off my cue snap, but I'm stitching this as I'm stitching all of them on 32 count charcoal fabric by Zweigart with just DMC white and then um, a green that I pulled from Stash, which, which is a Victorian motto green. And I can show that in another video when I start working on it again, but I'm not going to show that to you right now. And that's it. Those are my two whips that I worked on. I mean, obviously I did a lot of stitching and I finished five things, but those were the only other two things that I worked on the last two weeks. Okay. That was all the stitching. Haul. I, oh, and I've continued to work on fully finishing all of those finishes I showed in my last video. And when they are actually finished, finished, I will show them to you again, but they're not ready yet. <laughs> I'm still working on them. Um, I do have a little bit of haul, none of which is like specifically cross stitch, but it all has to do with finishing cross stitch. The first thing that you can see here, let me move those. I found these at Hobby Lobby. These were in the spring shop. I've already taken the tags off them because that's what I do. And these are beautiful little trays. They're in um, like a creamy white. It's not a bright white. And I, there's a larger one. They have these little ball feet. There's a larger one and a slightly smaller one. So the smaller one you can see fits inside the larger one. This would actually make a really cute tiered tray if you got like a little candlestick and put it between them. They'd make a very pretty like little tiered tray. But anyway, I got these, they were on sale in the spring shop and I just thought they were really pretty and might be nice for displaying um, some of my small finishes, like little pillows or tart pans or whatever, um, like on little 
side tables or I don't know but they were on sale so they were very inexpensive I think this one ended up being about five dollars and this one was like nine so they were not expensive at all and I just thought they were really pretty I like that kind of white lacy edging so those were in my Hobby Lobby spring shop but I know the spring shop is on its way out so if you have a Hobby Lobby and you want to look for these get there soon because the spring shop is I, right now it's all 50% off pretty soon it's gonna go even more because they're clearing it out for summer um, and autumn seasonal stuff doesn't last and unfortunately the seasonal stuff at Hobby Lobby I used to work at Hobby Lobby the seasonal stuff at Hobby Lobby is seasonal meaning they don't carry it year-round and there's no guarantee it'll be back the next year and you cannot buy them online the only things that Hobby Lobby carries online are their permanent stock items so stuff that they carry all the time um, anything that's seasonal you can't order it online so you have to get it in the shop and again once it's gone it's gone there's no way to get more of it because they only order a certain amount for the season and when it's sold out it's sold out and they will probably have new stuff the next year I have very rarely seen um, some things from like the pre the last year's spring shop for example come back in the next year's spring shop it's usually only if they're very popular and if they're still kind of on trend um, but who knows if white lace kind of trays are going to be on trend next spring so you know that's kind of how Hobby Lobby works with its seasonal stuff so you just got to get out there and look for it everything else I bought has to do with fully finishing all of those pieces I showed you I went to Joann's Joann's had a really good sale on their spring floral this last week their spring floral was 70% off so most of the little picks in here that I got most of these little bunches of flowers were like 89 cents or somewhere about. So you can see I bought, I just have them in a diaper box so I can see what I have. Can you say all that? Um, this is, not all of this is from Joann's, but the bulk of it is. And it's just their spring floral was 70% off. So I went and got a whole bunch of floral stuff for fully finishing um, for very cheap so and I think that sale is continuing on I'm pretty sure I saw that in their flyer at least maybe through the end of June so if you have a Joann's and you need some floral 70% off pretty good and then the last few things I bought also at Joann's also for fully finishing this was in their clearance section so cute this is a box of eggs speckled eggs they have blue like robin's eggs and then like an off-white and then two little um grapevine nests and these were from easter i'm pretty sure this was on clearance for six dollars and 47 cents for this box of eggs and i thought i would probably use these to finish something at some point something eastery or springy and then the last thing that I got, these were not on sale, but I wanted them and so I used my coupon to get one of them. Um, these are just some little buttons and these I got for also fully finishing and I got some little bumblebees and I got some strawberries and little strawberry blossoms. Um, so these are not a flat back. I forget what these are called when they have the little they have a little loop on the back I can't remember it has a certain name someone out there knows tell me what it's called when the button has the loop on the back is it just called a loop back button I don't know um, but my plan is to just use my wire cutters to snip the bet the loop off and then I can hot glue it straight down onto my piece um, and so these will be used probably to fully finish some pieces I just thought the strawberries and the bumblebees were really cute and kind of springy summery so kind of what I'm finishing in the next little while I really like this brand of um, buttons they're they're cute without looking kind of cartoony like they had other bumblebee buttons at Joann's but they weren't this cute they were kind of cartoony like they had like smiley faces on them they looked very juvenile kind of not and I don't mean that insulting I mean just like they look like they were made for little kids clothes kind of um, and so these these I liked much better and this brand dress it up 
um, has a whole creative button assortments for crafting, card making, quilting, sewing, and scrapbooking. They had a whole wall of these in just about every theme you could think of. So I will probably get more of these, maybe some Christmassy ones, maybe some pumpkins, maybe some sunflowers. I don't know. We'll see. But I really like them. And they were, I don't know, a couple bucks for these. I'm sure you can find them cheaper, but I just think these look really high quality. They're not like the the plastic is kind of a matte plastic so it's not super shiny they're a nice size and yeah they're not so kitschy or um, cartoony anyway just an idea if you're looking for finishing ideas that's all the haul I have um, I haven't ordered any more cross stitch stuff recently but I'm starting to get the itch so I might be putting in an order at one two three stitch <laughs> sometime this week because you know we like to buy our crafting stuff our cross stitch stuff makes us happy right okay we are at 35 minutes here we're doing pretty good let's finish off the video by announcing the winner of the giveaway so this time i went ahead and did the random comment generator thing before this just so i could make sure that we got a comment that qualified where they commented with their choices of threads and fabrics because that was kind of what i asked you to do so i had to make sure and luckily it was the first thing that came up she had answered the question and so she is our winner and that is rachel white Hi, Rachel White. Congratulations. You've won my giveaway. Rachel answered that she likes to stitch on Ada and Evenweave. And I don't know that she, she didn't say whether or not she's ever tried stitching on linen, but I might throw a little piece of linen in her package along with other fabrics for her to try. And then she said her favorite threads if she had to pick were classic color works. And that was one of the more popular ones. I think DMC was the top favorite. And then I think of the over dyed cottons, classic color works was most people's favorites. Um, and yeah, so Rachel White, if you are watching, please email me with your mailing address. My email is listed down below, but it's just yellowhousecrafts at gmail.com. No little. My YouTube channel says little yellow house crafts, but my email address is just yellow house crafts. No spaces, no symbols, nothing. Just yellow house crafts at gmail.com. So Rachel White, please send me your mailing address. Um, let me know. Uh, where to send your package to and I'm going to curate a little um, package for you with some fabric and some threads maybe a pattern I don't know we'll see but thank you so much everyone who entered my giveaway you're all wonderful I really enjoy reading your comments you guys feel like my friends you are my friends you are my my stitchy sisters and brothers but I think most everyone who watches my videos and comments at least is is a woman so you guys are my stitchy sisterhood and I really appreciate your your comments and your love and support and encouragement and you're just all very very kind to me so thank you for that um that's all I've got for you today I just want to tell you all to take care stay safe stay healthy please be kind um I that's all I'm going to say about that. Please be kind um, and show grace and we're going to get through this. This is a rough time right now. It's not easy. Um, there's a lot going on in the world that is scary and sad and hard and we need each other. So be kind, love each other and stay healthy and well and I will see you in about two weeks. Okay, take care guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.